All right, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to introduce our big painting project that we're going to do. So we practiced painting trees, we practiced blending, we've practiced color mixing and color wheels and color theory and all of that. So now we get to do our big project. So what are we doing for our project? Let me tell you, your painting project theme is drum roll, something special surrealism. But what does that even mean? Like, those words don't mean anything to me. So first of all, let's talk about what is surrealism. Um, sometimes a couple students know what this is, but it's kind of hard to put into words. Um, if you had to think of like a couple words to describe it, the very first one that typically comes up is going to be dreamlike. So surrealism artists tried to make artwork about their subconscious, which is not what you're thinking about. So your conscious is what you're thinking about. So right now I'm thinking about what I'm presenting. You're probably thinking about trying to listen to me and what I'm teaching, or you're probably thinking about what is surrealism or about what you're going to do for your project or about some of the sounds going on in the room but your subconscious is everything that's happening that you are not thinking about, like actively. It is not something you are aware of, but your brain is still processing. It still exists there. So for surrealists, they're trying to make artwork about that. And it's really hard to make art about something you're not thinking about. And so they had a bunch of different methods to try to... Um, try to do this, right? It's kind of an attempt. It's like an experiment. Um, but a lot of that is like making things seem like dreams. So very, very dreamlike. Um, they are typically items that are put together that are unexpected to be together. Um, I'm going to be showing you an example of like, it's like elephants in the wild, but instead of their elephant head, it's an instrument for their head. Um, so like just combining things. And with that, it's combining things to make stuff that can't exist in real life. We're also gonna talk about an artwork by Salvador Dali called The Persistence of Memory, and it's the melting clocks. That's what everybody knows it as. And we all know that like clocks are a solid object. They can't melt. Um, so it's stuff that can't exist in real life. And one of the biggest words that students usually use to describe it is weird. Um, I put this gift on here, gif on here because an idea of a deer with fingers kind of makes me uncomfortable. And surrealism as an art type is meant to make you kind of feel uncomfortable, feel weird, feel that like dreamlike um, or nightmarish feelings. So I'm going to show this. It has some really good examples of different surrealist art. Some of it is famous. Some of it is just done by like students or other amateur artists. And um, I do think that there's a couple that are made with AI. A lot of AI artwork tends to look surreal because AI doesn't really know what is supposed to be together. So like right now, AI can't really like make hands well. So it'll like make these weird shapes or objects or it'll replace it with something else entirely. Um, that gives you that weird like, ooh, this is kind of real, but it's like just not real enough that it makes us have that same weird feeling. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. There's the one I talked about with the elephants. And that's Salvador Dali himself.
All right. So a lot of those, like, it's a great way to describe it is like if you asked a like young child, like a kindergartner or a toddler, um, what should I draw? I, I feel like a lot of those would be their answers. They would be like, you should draw a windmill with butterfly wings. Like, um, so it's things like that. It's like these totally outlandish ideas that typically you wouldn't think to put together. So for this one here, this is called the persistence of memory. This is probably the most famous surrealist artwork. There's a couple other that are like pretty close in competition, but this is probably the most. This is by an artist named Salvador Dali. Um, you, We saw a picture of him before in that video, but the, it's not a really good example. But he has like this huge mustache that like curls up and it's really, really pointy. Um, so you might have seen him before. Um, this artwork, almost all students say that they've seen before, but they don't know where or they've seen something really like it. Um, this artwork, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, there's not a lot of items, but there are when we actually start to look into it. So first of all, there are the clocks. That's kind of the most obvious one. It's kind of nicknamed the melting clock painting. We know that obviously it has something to do with time. There are cliffs in the background. Um, we have a, a person or a shape that kind of like, we know that it has an eyelash. Um, right in here. It looks like it has a nose. This looks like a snake to me. Some people say it looks like feet. Um, I don't know, but like this shape as a whole, it's it's the most confusing part of this for me. So it, it kind of gives that weird dream effect. But um, if you look it up and you look up and you research it, it's going to say that it's a person. Um, we also have ants on this stopwatch over here. We have a fly hanging out on that clock. We have an olive tree that um, is dead and dying. We have a mirror. And way in the background, that little white dot with a shadow, that is an egg. So do you think that all of these things in this painting have meaning? Like, they're really weird to be thrown together. Um, they sure do. Um, a lot of the time, these things don't have, like, an obvious, like, straightforward meaning. But they are, like, really distant symbols for something. Um you know, if he wanted to make a painting about like time, which you don't, you don't have to read all of this, but um, if you wanted to make a painting about like time and memory and like memories fading, there's a lot of really easy ways to like paint that, like a clock and a brain, right? Those are pretty obvious. Here, instead, he chooses to use like ants and a weird shape that looks like a person, but not really like a person. And like, there's all these different things. And why make the clocks melting um so really really like super in-depth super confusing ideas like even the egg in the background like number 11 here says the egg is the symbol of birth and therefore renewal or like the restart of time um just super weird things so for your project um and you might want to start brainstorming but we're gonna go we're gonna do some brainstorming practice um you are going to make a surrealist or a dreamlike painting, um, weird painting, that includes at least three items that have meaning to you. It might not be obvious why those me those things have meaning to you. It needs to show blending, because that's what we've practiced, and it needs to use a color scheme. And we'll refresh on color schemes before we get to the actual, like, painting it part. So... Let's get to brainstorming. We are going to do two different methods. So number one is going to be making a mind map. So this is the assignment for um, today and later this week. So one to two days of working on this. Um, if you finish it, we'll move on to the next step. But we're going to make a mind map. If you've never made a mind map before, um, I am going to play this video so that you have a basic idea of it. And then I'm going to show you how to make a mind map like for coming up with ideas for a project. Um, you do need to make a mind map, even if you think you already have an idea. So here is the basics of a mind map. I needed a great idea for this video. I asked you guys to leave a comment and Travis, you delivered. So in this video, I'm going to take your advice and we're going to partner with our own brain to solve a creative problem using a technique called mind mapping. Hello daydreamers, welcome to the Small Town Creative, a channel devoted to helping you survive and thrive in your journey as an independent artist. I'm Michael Masters, a Michigan-based graphic designer and illustrator. 
First, let me tell you what mind mapping is, and then I'll show you how I use it to solve a common problem among designers. Mind mapping is an extremely simple tool that helps us to explore our mind by spewing out ideas and organizing them on a single sheet of paper. Essentially, it's a visual brainstorm, but it's more than that. It's a web of information that connects your ideas, each one to the other. Those connections are mapped out onto the page in real time as you're thinking them. Let's grab a sketchbook and do the thing. In the center of the page, we put whatever dilemma we're trying to figure out. I chose to explore the topic of sustaining a creative career. So I'm gonna start there and write this in the center. If you want to, you can add visual elements to further stoke the creative fire. Okay, next we'll branch out from the center with a key idea. For the first set of radiating ideas, you wanna think of these like chapters in a book. These are just like little stops on your journey to figure out the answer to your dilemma. From this point, you and your brain are pretty much gonna take it from here, allowing the ideas to just connect to each other free form. Every key idea that you write down will have associations that are important to you. Also try to sum up each idea in as few words as possible. We can continue making connections until we've exhausted our supply of ideas. Also, if you're a student attending a lecture or some kind of speaking engagement, mind mapping is a great way to take notes. It's like you're collecting the key ideas instead of trying to transcribe every word the speaker says. You can decorate your mind map or keep it simple if you'd prefer. Once you start using mind mapping for your own purposes, you will see the immense value that you can get out of this tool. I hope you found the information in this video to be helpful. If you want to see more ideation techniques, click the link that appears on the screen. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. Subscribe. All right. So now, can we start now? Um, no. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make an actual mind map. Um, I'm going to do things out of order from what I would normally do. And we're actually going to go forward so that I can keep the presentation up. Um, so I'm going to skip it, come back to it. So we're going to wake up our brains before we actually start making a mind map. So I told you I was going to teach you two different ways to brainstorm. Number one will be the mind map, which I promise I will go over. Number two is um, it has to do with the stream of consciousness. So you're going to need a blank sheet of paper. Um, and we are going to try to do that thing where we unlock the things we're not thinking about. Um, again, really weird. So stream of consciousness, it's a psychology idea, but it's a great way to figure out um, things to work on or figure out like what's going through your brain. Um, it's basically just letting your thoughts, that stream of things that you're always thinking about, kind of just keep flowing. So your stream of thoughts carries new thoughts, feelings, and sensations into your mind. The stream keeps flowing without fail. So that stream never stops. Even if you're like, eh, there are times where I'm not thinking about anything. You are still, there is still something going through your brain. So that can be made up of actual thoughts. So right now, you thinking about what I'm saying, you thinking about the stream of consciousness, you thinking about different things like that, right? Your actual thoughts. Maybe you're daydreaming. Those are your thoughts. Or you're thinking about feelings like, oh man, um, Miss Ducky, I am so bored listening to you, or I am so mad that I have to be in school today, or I am so anxious about my test I have next hour. Like any of those things, those feelings can also be part of that stream of consciousness. And then the last part, the last thing is senses. So like things coming through your senses. So um you know, maybe you're listening to this on your computer and your computer is like going, like it's working really hard to play this video. Or maybe the person sitting next to you is sitting there and they're tapping their pen. And so you're hearing that audio and that's what you're thinking about. And your brain is constantly fighting to try to keep focused on your thoughts, but sometimes these other things creep in. Okay, so you're trying to focus on me, but your neighbor tapping their pencil, that sound keeps pulling you in. And so you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, in order to, like, unlock this, there is an activity you can try to do. So you're going to start on your paper. You're going to write down one word. And I'm not going to write it down and make you guys watch me write it down. I'm going to give you an example out loud. So 
I'm going to start with the very first thing I think of, and I'm not going to stop. Okay. So you would just make a list of these things on your paper. I'll give you three minutes in a second here, but my example. So maybe I start by thinking about, uh, art class. And now I'm thinking about painting. And now I'm thinking about tools I use for painting. And now I'm thinking about being messy. And now I'm thinking about cleaning. And now I'm thinking about how I don't really want to clean my house. And now I'm thinking about how I'd rather take a nap. And now I'm thinking about how tired I am. Now I'm thinking about how I'm going to have to do a bunch of stuff after school. And that makes me even more tired. And now I'm thinking about how I can hear cars outside my classroom every now and then. And that's distracting me. And now I'm thinking about how my shirt is kind of itchy today. And I don't like that. Um, and so you just keep going and going and going and going until you get to a stopping point or you you run out of time. So if something interrupts you, you would write that down too. All right, so now. We are going to make a mind map now and this is the process that we use to make a mind map for coming up with ideas for art. Um, for this project, we are making our artwork about things that are important to us. So since that's what it's about, in the middle, I'm going to write important things. Okay. And you can put it in just a normal bubble. I like to put mine in like a little cloud bubble. Um, it really doesn't matter. You get to pick. Now, off of that, I am going to need to list different things that are important to me. So some things that are important to me. These can be, these are like the he described in the video. These are like chapters in a book. So things that are important to me, family. Um, art is important to me. Um, let's see, education. And kindness. And if you have more, feel free to add another part, like maybe, um, like weather or video games are important to you too. So I'll actually put, I'll put, I'm going to put weather. You know, maybe the weather really, really affects me and it does. Um, so now these are my little chapters in my book. I can always go back and add more if I want to. Now off of each of these, I need to think about things, um, that might branch off. So when I think of family, what do I think of? I think of uh, my son, Miles. I think of um, my husband, Mr. Stuckey. I think of my dogs. Um, maybe I also think of um, family dinners. So I think of dinner. So it can be anything you think about when you think of family. Now off of that, I'm gonna start branching out more. So when I think of my dogs, I think of dog treats. I think of running, because one of my dogs is a crazy runner. I think of trash, because one of my dogs really, really likes to eat any food that's left around and leave the wrapper everywhere. Um, off of dinner, ooh, I'm gonna think of pizza. I had pizza last night for dinner. Um, off of pizza, I think of work because my first job was working at a pizza place. Um, maybe from work, I think of money. Okay. Also off of pizza, maybe I think of pineapple. I love pineapple on pizza. So I can keep branching off if I end up like, I can have one big long trail and then I can go back and add more things off of this. Um, or I can go to a entirely new branch or one of my chapters. So off of art, I think of painting. Off of painting, I think of brushes. Maybe off of painting, I think of messy. 
And off of messy, I think of cleaning. And off of cleaning, I think of soap and sponges. I can go back to art and maybe I think of clay and I think of pottery and I think of vases. When I go to education, I think of teaching. Off of teaching, I think of apples and I think of students. And off of students, I think of headphones, because I am nonstop being asked, asked if I have headphones students can borrow, or if they can go to their locker to get headphones. Maybe also off of students, I think of locker. Off of education, I also think of homework. Off of homework, I think of math. I was taking my math classes. I hated the homework that I had to do. It was one of my least favorite things. I like math as a subject, just did not like the homework. Um, what do I think of when I think of math? I think of symbols, right? Like plus, minus, times, divide. I also think of calculators. So now I would keep building this out. The goal is to fill the entire paper with writing about this size. Um, I've had some students decide to go way, way smaller because they want to create this crazy math. But you really want some of these things on the way outside edge because that's where we're going to go and we're going to look and decide what do we actually want to do for our project or what do you want to draw or I mean really in anything, what do you want to use to make art? Like what subject? You can use this for this project. You can also use it for other projects. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to underline all of the things that are items that would work for this project. So an apple is an item. Teaching is not an item. Students, not an item, but a locker is an item, headphones, calculators. Symbols isn't really an item, so I'm not gonna underline that one. You maybe could make it work. Homework is not an item. Off of homework, I could have done like paper and that would be an item. Um, I don't really want to pick people. Like I don't want to, we have to paint whatever we decide. Um, you could decide to put someone in here, but I would want to branch these out more. If like painting miles, if I think that might be too difficult for me, maybe I branch things off of that to make it simpler. I have dog treats. Um, trash, you could maybe do like a trash bag. So, you know, maybe I build off of that more into trash bag. Okay. Or maybe I'm thinking of empty boxes. Okay. So you can always go back and like break it down even more so that it's easier because empty boxes are an item. Trash bag is an item. Money could be an item. Pineapple, vases, sponges. Um, I could do soap, paint brushes, right? And you would hopefully have a lot more if you've built out the rest of your stuff enough. I had two chapters I didn't even touch here and I didn't finish really with family and I could have added more. Now from these underlined words, these end up being symbols for whatever their chapter is. So like a calculator might be a symbol for education, which is something important to me. Now, if I ever just drew an artwork with a calculator, nobody would probably guess that. And that's okay. Sometimes it's they're symbols, like very distant symbols. And that happens a lot in surrealist art. So for this assignment, this is kind of the point. If you're trying to, like, if you don't have an end goal for a project, sometimes this can give you some really interesting ideas. Like, I would never think just to draw, like, a trash bag or empty boxes, but those might be something fun to try to sketch in my sketchbook to try something new. So, I have made my mind map. I have identified the things that are items. Then, you can think about, okay, what items would I want to include in my surrealist artwork? So 
maybe I want to make an artwork with a pineapple in it and an empty box and a pair of headphones. So I'm just going to pick three of my items. It doesn't matter which ones. I don't need to know how these are all going to fit together, but I know that I want to use a pineapple, an empty box, and headphones. If there's more, if you're like, ooh, I really want that calculator in it, star the calculator too. Then this is what you would take a picture of and submit to me.